Let's hit the lab. Right now, what we've got, and I just want to give you a quick reminder here on router 3, actually router 2 right here, serial 0, this is the multipoint subinterface. Just want to remind you about the config, the NCAP frame relay and no frame inverse ARP commands go on the physical interface. The IP address and the frame map commands go on the sub-interface. You have to define it as point-to-point -point or multi-point when you create it, but when you go back to configure it, you don't have to keep typing interface 0, 0 0.123 multi-point. You can just put the interface number. On router 3, a quick reminder here about point-to-point -point interfaces. We have no IP address, in-cap frame, and no frame inverse ARP on the physical interface. And then the point-to-point -point sub interface, we use an IP address and the frame relay interface DELC command. So let me raise that up just a bit there. And we're going to go ahead and get started with our config on router 2. We're going to disqualify routers 2 and 3 from taking part in the DRBDR election. And we do that with this little command. IPOSPF, and what we're going to change is the priority. Now, iOS help is not terribly iOS helpful here because it just says router priority, so we better know what's going on with that. And let's go ahead and change that to zero. Notice you can change this one to zero. Range is 255, highest wins, and we're, zero disqualifies it, period. So we will go ahead and configure that on three right now as well. And that's it. So we'll go ahead and start our OSPF config here on router 3. That's our process number, of course, locally significant only. We start with the network command and then the network number itself. Oops, 12.123.0. Then a wildcard mask, which is not optional with OSPF. What's this going to be? right on the octet. It's real simple. It's a 24-bit subnet mask, so it's going to be a wildcard mask of 000255. 0, 0, then you got to define the area number, and we're going to put that in area 1. Don't get cute and put it in an IP address format. We're going to put it in a decimal value. Actually, we're going to make that 0. And we haven't forgotten the loopbacks, but we're going to go ahead and get this core up and running first. So we've got our commands there. They're looking good. Router 1 we know is the hub. And really, that's it. We hope. <laughs> Let's put that neighbor command. we got to attempt and DR other here. This is what we expect to see at this point. Attempt, you're only going to see that on the hub router in an NVMA network when you're uh, trying to get the adjacencies up and running. You're not even going to see attempt with any other network type. So we're going to just give it a few more seconds because we know the hellos ought to be coming in every 30 seconds or so. And it doesn't look good. And let me tell you why it doesn't look good and what's going on there. On the hub, you need a neighbor command because this is very unusual, but we need to send a unicast hello across the NVMA network here to get the process started. And that's what we're going to do right now. You only need to put this on the hub. And you just simply put the neighbor address right there. And hopefully that gets the ball rolling. We still see attempt and DR other. Like I said, I've seen this take a little while. So we'll give it a few seconds here and then we'll start some debugs if we don't see something come up. We get the only problem with doing the working with broadcast segments first is you get used to it being so fast and then you come over to the land of 30 second hellos and two minute dead times and just think, oh man, you know, how much longer is this going to take? Because I have seen this go all the way down to zero and then the adjacency pops up. So what I'm going to do is pause the video here for about a minute and 27 seconds, minus however long I've been talking, and then I'll start it again right after these dead times hit zero. All right, something a little interesting has happened here. Um, we've got our neighbor adjacency to router 2. We see neighbor 222 there, so that's looking good. 
but we don't have our adjacency to router three yet and we see that dead time is starting to tick down there pretty good so i'm going to go ahead and run a debug ip ospf hello and let's see what we see from here i have to like like i said you have to get used to waiting a little longer when you're on a serial link okay so we got our debug message i'll go ahead and do a you all so we don't get more of them and by golly it is spelling out again what's going on we're getting a hello from 3333 see this is why i love debugs because otherwise if you're not using this debug you know what you're doing you're just kind of staring at the monitor hoping to spot what's wrong and what's wrong may not be terribly obvious and here or it might be something you don't know yet so here we're being told we've got mismatched hello parameters and I didn't do anything when you weren't looking as far as those IP OSPF hello and dead time commands we used earlier uh, we used the hello command and there is a dead time as well but we know the dead time is four times the hello by default so um, it's not a mask issue you know because the mask issue the masks match up perfectly but boy those hello and dead timers don't so the question is though why why is that you know why do we have this mismatched hello parameter well actually a good place to look for that is show IP interface let's use OSPF there a serial zero this is the network type and you can see finally when you see this neighbor 0000 from attempt to down that means hey we tried for two minutes and you know it didn't work out so that adjacency to router 3 just didn't come up so I ran show IP OSPF interface serial 0 and you can look here for a clue or two but we know it's the hello time but note here that the non broadcast network that is the default on a serial interface but also we know that we used a physical interface on router 1 a point to point excuse me point to multi point interface on router 2 and then a point to point interface on router 3 that's good troubleshooting when you're thinking okay you know this is odd and maybe I don't know the answer immediately but I knew the debug to run and now I know the hello parameters are mismatched and I could probably just go to router 3 and just change those and they'll be fine but why do I have this mismatch well that's something else that a show command can show you and this is why I love learn using them in labs because you really can learn stuff and what you're about to learn is that when you have a point to point sub interface and you put OSPF on it it defaults to the network type point to point and you say hey what's the big deal well the big deal as you can see is the hello and dead timers are different for that kind of OSPF network see we've seen them on a broadcast network and we know what they're supposed to be on a non broadcast network but I snuck this point to point sub interface in here and now all of a sudden I got a point to point network type and the hello and dead timers are different so I have two different ways I could fix this I'm going to show you one here Maybe a little out of scope but I want you to see this always a good idea to know more than one way to do this kind of thing you can actually change the network type on an OSPF interface and we could change it to broadcast we know the timer is there uh, and we've seen a broadcast network that's our Ethernet segment which we will add back to this lab shortly uh, non broadcast we're configuring that right now over frame point to point we're seeing that kind of an action now and I will we'll actually build one later in the section of the course in the OSPF course and I'll show you all about those point to multi point is the only one of the four you won't see in this course and what that is it's a semi complex collection of point to point links so that will make a lot of sense when you finally see one one day but we've got enough to do here now so I could just change this to non broadcast and the timer should change as a matter of fact let's go ahead and do that because we know we know the other way what I could just do is IP OSPF hello 30 that would take care of it and then it would dynamically change the dead time to match but let's go ahead and run that command and we'll verify and look at that we changed the network type non-broadcast and hello 30 dead 120 so now all of a sudden things are matching up with router 1 now speaking real world this may take a little while to come back up in a little bit of work theoretically it's like oh there's no problem it'll come back up etc it may do that here but let's go ahead and run show IP OSPF neighbor 
and we still have a temp dr other and that's fine it may actually come up while i'm doing this we're going to talk about that as soon as it gets done because you can see i lost my adjacencies when we did that i am going to come back as a matter of fact we'll talk about it now clear ip ospf process and we'll see if the adjacencies come back up the way they should this is uh, what I call the ultimate nullifier of OSPF commands. You are taking everything down. You're restarting all your processes, which of course ends your adjacencies. And the key here is this is not a command you want to run in a production network when anybody's on it or you don't want all your adjacencies going down. Of course, they should come back up, but they're still going to be down for a little while. And a couple things to watch here. First off, Cisco doesn't use uppercase very often. But the router's asking you, reset all OSPF processes? Are you sure you want? It really, it's saying, are you sure you want to do that? And when it's saying, are you really, really sure you want to do that, is whenever you see the word no in the brackets, because that's the default answer. If you're asked a question by the router and you have one answer in those brackets, you can just hit enter to accept that default answer. When the default answer is no, uh, as Barbara Corcoran once famously said, I'm going to give you a minute to rethink that. Uh, that's basically what the router is telling you at that point. So let's go ahead and run show IP OSPF neighbor. And we're still we're in two-way with router 2 and attempt here with router 3. And if I had my guess, this adjacency to router 3 is going to come up at the absolute last second. And if it doesn't, we'll have to check our neighbor commands, that kind of thing. But that's usually the way this works when you're basically bringing an OSPF adjacency back from the dead, so to speak. And it's not really so to speak, because it did say actually say dead. We're almost there. Cue the dramatic music. We're in two-way with router two, so we're looking good there. Three seconds. And there we go, right there. Process neighbor 3333, three, 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 loading to full, loading done. And now, let's run the neighbor command, and this is what we expect to see. That always goes down to the last second, always. And you got router 3 and router 2. Notice the neighbor IDs there. We're going to talk about all these fields in a, uh, in a few minutes. But notice the neighbor ID is 3333 three, three, and 2222, two, 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 respectively for routers two and three, and we haven't even put the loopbacks in OSPF yet, but it looks like their IP addresses are being used as the router IDs by those particular routers. But what we're expecting to see here, you'll notice the priority of zero, that's the priority of the interface on the other side of the adjacency. We set those to zero so they wouldn't take part in the, uh, in the election. Full is always good. DR other, that's what we wanted to see. We wanted them to be DR others, not participate in the election. The dead time now should never go below a minute and 30 seconds, and I don't think it will. There's the IP address of the interface on the other end of the adjacency. Notice that's now different from neighbor ID. And there's interface 00. That is the local interface through which the adjacency has been created. So we're going to stop right there. Then when we come back, we're going to run a loop, maybe another command or two on router one, and then we're going to go ahead and get our loopbacks into our OSPF configs. So I'll see you in the next video. We'll take care of that business.